If you look on page three, 2014 awards luncheon sponsors, Angel Adams, who not only leads our board of directors, but walks her talk. Sisters of St. Mary of Namur, our own state representative, Lon Burnham. And missing from the list, we apologize, also another walk your talk, oh wow, I can't even say it quite with a straight face to say Reverend Jeff Hood walks his talk because he walked from Dallas to uh, Tarrant County Courthouse, but our uh, own board member, Re Reverend Jeff Hood. Um, and also one of our award recipients, Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word of San Antonio. And last but not least, a major sponsor, and you'll see them on the front of the, of the brochure, the Harold Simmons Foundation. Join me in standing and applauding these incredible sponsors that made this luncheon award possible. Now I'm going to invite our past president of the TCADP Board of Directors, another one of those uh, living legends, light givers, our own Bob Van Stenberg. Bob, come at this time for the presentation of the Appreciation Award. Please join me in applauding Bob. Mr. Sanders, I'm going to be a well. I'm going to be a well. Thank you very much for saying that. There's a well inside of me, and I can float on it forever. I like that. Our first award today is uh, an appreciation award for Ariana Campos. And Ariana, would you come up now, please, so while I talk about you, the folks can see your pretty face. Ariana, and you can read about Ariana in your program on page 8. But Ariana works in the office of Representative Jessica Farrar. And come over here. Mm -hmm. Representative Farrar has been the individual who has carried our bill for the last four sessions to repeal the death penalty. And those of you who have achieved success in your lives know that that's always due in a great part to the people who work for you and do all the things in your offices and wherever you work that... Uh, that make you be successful. And Ariana is part of that in Jessica Farrar's office. And I'll tell you, our own personal involvement at TCADP with Ariana is that in, her, in Jessica's office. Every time we call Ariana for something, we get it. Ariana, you need a room. Ariana, when can I see Jessica? Ariana, can we do this? Ariana, what about a, every time we call Ariana, we get what we want. Many times she should say to us, hey, come on, guys, you're asking too much. But she never does and always, always comes through. So Ariana, we appreciate all that you do, and you. you folks see her bio, and I would call your attention to the, the last sentence, and I think it's very important to tell about who Ariana is. She's a volunteer for big brothers and big sisters, now, giving of herself to other people, and that is, that is so important, so important. We were talking before lunch, and I said, okay, Ariana, what, uh, what should I tell these people about you that's not in the bio? And she said, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. She said, well, uh, I call my mother every day. <laughs> and her mother, Estella, is right here. And Estella, would you stand too, please? Because <laughs> while Ariana lives in Houston, Estella lives in the Valley. And Estella took a bus from the Valley a couple days ago to be, come to Houston to come up here to watch her daughter receive this award. So mom, this is part of your reward too because children are as good as their parents. So Ariana... We thank you for all that you do, had done for us. Thank you. <clears throat> so, I started working for Representative Farrar in 2010 part time, and shortly after that election cycle, I said I called her up and I said, and I was working another full time job, and I, you know, I just said, if there's an opportunity to go work for you in Austin, 
you know, I'd love to do that. And she pretty much said, pack your bags. <laughs> so I'm the type of legislative staffer that will relocate, you know, from Houston to Austin. And I've done two, and I'm working on my third. And so during my first session, I very quickly learned that my job would also include assisting organizations like yours fulfill your missions. And so if I can do that and I can save your organization five, 10 minutes from having to deal with the logistical issues, then I'm happy to do that and even more. So I really appreciate this award. This is an amazing, just, I just really appreciate this because no one's ever done this before. Not that I expect it because this is my job, but I'm just really appreciative. And just a real quick funny story is when I first got Kristen's email, I was like, oh, cool, they're going to, you know, honor Jessica. <laughs> and then after rereading it and talking to her about it, you know, she pretty much says, oh, congratulations, this is for you. <laughs> so thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Congratulations, Ariana. And now for our next two appreciation awards, let me present David Noblin, co-coordinator of the TCADP Dallas chapter. Let's give David a, a round of applause as he comes up. And David was the one name that each of our phenomenal pilgrim, pilgrimage walkers uh, cited as kind of the wind beneath their wings. So David, thank you for encouragement in a lot of ways. Come on up. Well, thank you. And uh, if you guys would come on up here too, maybe. Uh, Maria and maybe Paula wait behind her, if you would. Um, Maria says she's an ordinary volunteer. And she didn't want to accept this award, but on behalf of all of us volunteers, she agreed to accept. Maria, why don't you come on up? Uh, but Maria, you know, we're, we're honoring you because of your faithfulness, and we can count on you. Just one little example, which is recent. Jeff and uh, Wes and Lynn wanted support yesterday at the uh, courthouse in Dallas because they were going into the VA's office and on the press conference. Very short notice, a matter of hours. Maria is on the courthouse steps holding our banner. And uh, Maria is a devoted Catholic, and she is passionately obedient to her ch church's teachings on a culture of life. And she's one of the pioneers of carrying our light south of the Trinity uh, River in Dallas. There are other Catholic lights here. There are many Catholic lights here, too, and I wish we could acknowledge uh, each of you. Uh, Maria, one final thing I want to say is we have fun sometimes. I'll never forget the DJ who urged people to come and sign up at our table because he said in some of the eastern cities they're already beginning to euthanize people over 55. Maria's very honest. She rushed over and you know, corrected him, <laughs> clarified. But uh, we really love you very much. We really appreciate you very much. Maria is with us day in and day out. It doesn't make any difference which way the wind is blowing. It doesn't make any difference what people think. She's there for us. I just have some quick notes that I wrote because... I told uh, Christian that the only way that I could accept this um, gift was that it's an offering back up to our Lord who gives us everything. He has given me every and each one of y'all and those that have been with this from, like Mr. Sanders says, far, far long ago from the beginning. I'm quite new. I'm not that far back, but this award belongs to everybody, not to me. I'm just here to accept it in behalf because the good Lord willed it for me to uh, accept it at this time. As a minister for the prison for the Diocese of Dallas, um, I'd just like to read something from John Paul II as a minister and because of our Catholic faith and what we believe. 
He's written, one of the teaching, one role of the teaching office of the church is to identify the foundation of our faith and moral life amid differences and in time and in place. Um, he talks about how the dignity of the imprisoned is important and Mr. Sanders spoke about lethal injection and most recently you all have heard and recognized all the difficulties of the um, botched, botched in injections and things as such and all the pain that is there. That is one of the things that is referred to the dignity of the imprisoned and it is important that we continue to educate all those that are unaware of those blotched injections and other things that are so difficult. Just one last thing I would like to ask for your prayer because those that uh, are behind the walls do suffer a great deal even through families, traumas. I, uh, in prayer I would like to ask that you Pray for an inmate who is struggling as his mother is undergoing a uh, hospice situation with her cancer and his wife cannot be here because of that. And so there's a lot of things there that uh, toil and are very, you know, it's difficult for us, but more so for them. Thank you all. Uh, would you come on up? <laughs> Paula really has had problems with being acknowledged. <laughs> Paula also says that uh, she's an ordinary, per just an ordinary volunteer. And, uh, and she accepted it on behalf of all the volunteers. It, we encouraged her just as we did Maria. Uh, Paula is also one of those who with just a few hours notice was at the courthouse steps yesterday helping to hold the banner. Uh, and it's day in and day out. It's been going on for years. That's just Paula. It doesn't make any difference what the public thinks. She's a person of faith. She's a Quaker. And her Quaker beliefs in equality and the worth of each person, that's the driving force in, in her involvement with us and in other aspects of her life. Um, <clears throat> Paula actually is a multifaceted person. Uh, she's a birder, as in Audubon, uh, avid. She's a drummer, as in Ringo Starr and Hard Day's Night. And she's a voracious reader. And she's also a quiet yet passionately spiritual person who is at home with Buddhists, Muslims, Catholics, persons on death row. And Paula is uh, the reason that some of us are here today and involved in this movement. And Paula, we love and appreciate you very much. Well, thank you very much. I had to hang on to the rail because I thought I was going to faint. <laughs> and I still think I'm going to faint. But uh, the Dallas chapter is very active in looking for opportunities to speak or march or have a tabling event and I'm just a worker among workers and I'd like to express my appreciation to everybody in the Dallas chapter uh, for all your hard work in getting this issue before the public. Thanks. Thank you David and congratulations Paula and Maria. Next appreciation award, let me invite to the stage certainly three individuals and a chapter that needs no introduction, Nancy Bailey, Dave Atwood, and Jennifer Simmons from the TCADP Houston chapter.
I have to use my notes or I'm afraid I'll go blank. Um, notice the picture of Burnham here on the stand. Burnham Terrell reached his 90th birthday on November the 12th and passed away on the morning of November the 13th of 1913. Burnham was Professor Emeritus of the Philosophy Department and a founder and first director of the Honors Program at the University of Minnesota, where he enjoyed a 40-year 40, 40 career. Guided by Quaker principles of nonviolence, Burnham participated in the 1963 March on Washington, followed Dr. Martin Luther King across the Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama, and led, led peaceful protests in opposition of the Vietnam War, period. <laughs> For the last 15 years, he was an active member of the TCADP Houston chapter and faithfully coordinated the Houston area execution vigils. He also contributed to the TCADP's efforts to move the Texas Democrats to endorse ab abolition of the death penalty in its 2012 platform. Burnham's wife of 21 years, Joan Terrell, will accept the award on his behalf. I'm honored to accept this award for my husband. It was, it is a com to me, it is almost providential that lighting the way is the theme of this meeting. Because in the Quaker faith, light is what the Quakers follow. I'm seeking the light. I'm following the light. I'm looking for the light. And that was Burnham's life. He was looking for the light. To t Burnham, who was basically a logician in, in his professional life, light was truth. And that is what he always sought. He sought truth in expression. He was very careful in the words he chose. And they were to be truthful words. When our Lord came before Pontius Pilate and said, I am the light, Pilate said, what is the light? What is truth? And the truth is what we seek here, is real truth. And that is not easy, and it is not simple. The truth is what is scorned by the pilots of this world. The truth is what is said, there isn't any truth. But we seek the truth of of life, that life is the truth, and that is above everything what we must support and defend. So thank you, and thank you from Burnham, who would be, who would be very happy for this. And it is a culmination of his whole life's work. I thank you. such a powerful legacy that we're most appreciative of. Now let me invite TCADP Board Secretary Les Breeding and TCADP Past President Bob Van Stenberg back uh, to the platform to present our Courage Award.
And you can applaud them. <laughs> Earlier I mentioned that uh, Representative Farrar has, for the last four sessions, had a, carried a bill in the House calling for repeal of the death penalty. And I should note that uh, one of the names on that bill is Representative Lon Burnham, who is here. He's always sought to be co sponsor of that bill. And we thank both Jessica and Lon for that, of course. In the last three sessions, that bill has received a hearing in the House Criminal Jurisprudence Committee. And as mentioned earlier, it was a long affair this last time, lasting into the night and the next day. But it was a fantastic hearing. Not that uh, the bill got voted on, not that it left committee, because it didn't, and we didn't expect that it would. But in the hearing, and Lon was on that committee too, as I recall, in that hearing, one representative said, unequivocally, I oppose the death penalty without question. It's unnecessary. I've always opposed the death penalty. We've never heard that said before in the capitals in a committee meeting in the state of Texas. That was, was phenomenal. I mean, those of us in the audience would, I can't believe I just heard that. <laughs> I mean, that's courage. That is courage as for a public official, and as, as you, sir, had indicated so much so uh, rightly earlier. Uh, it's hard for people to say that even though they believe it. Lon says it. Others have said it. This man said it in an open hearing. I oppose the death penalty. Representative Terry Canales. Representative Canales is a courageous man to say that. This is his first term in, in, in the legislature. That's courage for a freshman representative to say that in public, uh, regardless of what the consequences may be. That's courage. And for that reason, TCADP is presenting the Courage Award for 2014 to Representative Terry Canales. Now, unfortunately, he cannot be here today. Uh, we are in touch with his office, and at some point in the near future, we're going to be in his office with him, of course, and present him the award personally, directly to him. And, uh, and he says his regrets. He's sorry he can't be here. Uh, his, his district is down in the valley. It's a long way away, as you know. And he's had some, uh, some uh, family issues he had to deal with recently, too. So for those reasons, he can't be here. But we are going to present him the award anyhow. And receiving the award on his behalf <laughs> is my co-worker in the legislature, Les Breeding. So Les, Representative Canales, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Uh, if you look on page 10, you'll notice the resemblance, right? You know, <laughs> it's really. <laughs> uh, you know, people might ask, okay, so you, you know, you have filed this bill for legislatures in a row, and you have gotten hearings three legislatures in a row, but what is the point? You know, why, you know, it's not going to get out of that committee. It's not going to get on the House floor. It's not going to pass the House and the Senate. Why are you doing that? But it is amazing. Every time that we have one of these hearings, we think, oh my gosh, this is the best hearing yet. In this particular hearing, we had, um, we had Anthony Graves get up, and if I had been counseling him, I would not have urged him to take the approach he did. <laughs> he got up and essentially said, you know, I got put in prison uh, and on the death row for 16 years and served two more years. Why did y'all do that? And what are y'all going to do to stop that? You know, he was very in their face, pointed. This led, you are the people that are responsible for this. You need to do something about it. And very strong testimony. And then uh, Keith Brooks, the same thing. Uh, I did not know Keith at that time, but talking about uh, his father, Charlie, uh, you know, had, he was not pointed and, and all of that, but very, very good testimony, very personal testimony. And he's a very well-spoken person uh, and got their attention. Well, the result is, is that we had uh, a fair amount of reaction from the members. And uh, we've talked about uh, what Representative Canales had to say that, you know, he talked about uh, his experiences and 
uh, how the topic had come up in his life and how he had made his decision. And, and he was uh, against the death penalty. It's unnecessary. We had another member that uh, was uh, much more conservative speak out and say, well, you know, we all know the death penalty's got a lot of problems. You know, words that you would not expect to hear from the, the dais in uh, the Texas uh, House Criminal Jurisprudence Committee. They know that there are problems. So if we're gonna be bringing this bill up, it's coming up again, and uh, I would encourage y'all to be a part of that process, whether it is lobbying here locally in Fort Worth, Dallas, that sort of thing, or help us down at the Capitol, go to the hearings, be a part of that process, and watch change happen and see folks like Mr. Canales be able to be uh, outspoken and lead the way. Thank you, Les and Bob. And now our final award. And who better to present the David P. Atwood Founders Award than the TCADP founder, Dave Atwood. Please join me in applauding again, Dave Atwood. You know, there was a time when uh, TCADP did not have a lobby corps, and uh, there were a few of us that would sometimes wander around the state capitol trying to find somebody to listen to, and to listen to us, and to hear what we had to say. And we're going back quite a few years, and many times when you'd go into the office of a, a legislator, a senator, you weren't really greeted with uh, a great welcome. It wasn't very warm. But there was always one place where we knew we could go. And we would get a warm welcome, and that was the office of Lon Burnham. And Lon and Les Breeding would greet us, and they would listen to us. And that was very nice. I want you to know that. I mean, that was, those were the early days, and you know, we weren't appreciated by very many people. So uh, I want to tell Lon Burnham First of all, I think probably many of you know about Lon. He has sponsored bills against the death penalty, but his work on peace and justice goes way beyond that even. Uh, I heard about you, I mean, I heard about this legend in Texas. That was Lon Burnham. You're a legend whether you know it or not, Lon. And, uh, and, and so any issue on peace, social justice, human rights issues, Lon Burnham has been a person that you would go to and you know you would get heard and he would probably act on what your concern was. So it's my privilege and honor to present to him today the Founders Award for all the work that he's done. And I tell you, there are certain people in our, in our, in our government that keep things moving forward and, and you, can, can, you, can, you know they're gonna be there. And Lon Burnham is one of those people, and he's been a leader on this issue and many other peace and social justice issues. So it's my honor, Lon, today to present to you the Founders Award, which I, I have right here, matter of fact. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, there's always a little bit of ambivalence about accepting a lifelong achievement award, particularly, <laughs> particularly when you know I'm a relatively recent convert, so why are they saying lifelong? Uh, and particularly when you know I have a very difficult election in front of me, and so why are you saying lifelong? Um, regardless of election outcomes, this is an issue that is really very, very near and dear to me and has been for a long time. Um, but there was this 35-year gap, and since you're talking about lighting the way, I just want to remind everybody here of things you've already heard before. 
There are various conversion processes. And with Paul, it was just one short trip to Damascus. Uh, with me, I was in high school, and I read Camus, The Stranger, and I just knew that it was absolutely this secularly wrong thing to do for any government to have that power over an individual's life. In the course of that 35 years, I saw the Carrasco outbreak in the prison where we had prison employees taken and their lives were put at risk. And I thought, well, maybe there's an exception. And then I decided to run for office, and I damn sure was sure there were some exceptions. <laughs> but uh, I also became a Quaker along the way. And, and like Burnham, who spells his name the right way with an H as opposed to this Burnham, who doesn't, um, um, a friend, capital F friend in Austin, sat me down in 2005 and said, Lon, it is absolutely intellectually inconsistent for you to be a pacifist and say a government should not make war against people and not turn around and say that a government should not kill an individual. It is intellectually inconsistent and it is dishonest. Well, there's my conversion. I can remember the apartment we were staying in and the fr friend from Austin that told me that I had to get on the right side of justice. It's not just a little bit of maybe. You can't be a little bit pregnant and you cannot be uh, just a little bit anti-abortion. So I'm glad to say that I'm an anti-abortion. -abor Where did that come from? Uh, I'm glad to say I'm anti-death penalty. That's subconscious working on me. Um, I'm not sure I deserve a lifelong award, but I'm extremely pleased to take this award, and I only regret that I won't be able to stay with you all afternoon because I do have a very close selection. I do have my tennis shoes on. I'm going to be out on the streets pretty quickly here, but I'll be back with you this evening, and in case you're as directionally deprived as I am sometimes, Estrus, I was wrong. It's not the Fred's north of here. It's the Fred's south of here, so we'll be seeing you at the Blue Bonnet Circle later this evening. I want to particularly mention Ariana. People underestimate how important it is that you be nice to and work with the staff. The staff that care and work their butts off round the clock on behalf of the elected officials are there because they care about the same issues you care about. They're just wearing a different hat. So I hope every year you honor a legislative staff person. I certainly appreciate the honor today. And I also appreciate the fact that Esther can actually vote for me. <laughs> and vote with pride. Two things happened to me in 1997. One broke my heart. The other inspired my civic pride. My mother died in 1997 and Lon Burnham was elected to the Texas House of Representatives in 1997. Lon, Representative Burnham, is my poster child for integrity in a world where it's really hard to find public servant in many of our elected officials. Lon Burnham is the real deal.